So once again, we've got all 42 sieves, but this time on an extremely small map. And I know that the starts aren't necessarily going to be equal, the map isn't also like super balanced either, but we're still going to get an idea of maybe which AI performs the best, or at least compared to some of the others. Unfortunately, like last time, we are playing with all the nations, just not all the alternative leaders, because I'm basically playing Civilization Crashing Storm. That was horrible, that's just the, that's the best way I can describe it. I'm sure one day we'll see a mod or, or a mod will update and, uh, and we'll be able to play with everyone, but uh, for now, I guess this would have to do. I know it might seem like Coupe is starting in the worst position here, but I don't know. I mean, there are some countries that are going to be way worse off. Also, if I can get it to work, I've been thinking about doing an old world game like we were talking about. I just have Civ start off in the Eastern Hemisphere on a real Earth map and uh, and maybe making that like a 40 minute video. Let me know if you're interested in that. If, uh, if I can get that to work, I definitely would like to try it. So as you can see, most of the capitals have been founded, although there are a couple Civs that are still kind of roaming around. But they better be quick because there are some places that already have their second city. There's definitely going to be a little bit of a separation, but between the two sides, lots of features here that might make it difficult to cross paths, but we'll see. For a second there, I thought the Zulu were involved in a war on turn five. I mean, because it's the Zulu, so that shouldn't be surprising. But no, it's just a little flood, tiny little flood going on, and that's, yeah, that's gonna start impacting a lot more empires. We're going to turn 500 again, so we'll see if there's one Civ that can conquer the entire map. Obviously, there's gonna be a lot of loyalty stuff that happens, but that's kind of every game now. Come on, Kube, I believe in you, buddy. Just, just find a spot. Any spot this desert's gonna have to do. Yeah, obviously there's gonna be pretty massive free-for-alls whenever these cities revolt. It's gonna be a mess. We already have someone over here trying to take out Sweden. Not a surprise. I mean, they're kind of surrounded too, so uh, they might be okay. England has three cities, so that is kind of a bad sign. Unless maybe Norway can invade. I don't know what they're gonna do. Well, there is this beautiful canal, so anyone can make it to this inland sea if they have open borders with those guys, I guess. So maybe there's a chance that they might see some raiding. This is like the most perfect spot for Russia. I'm sure they will thoroughly enjoy this. I mean, they're probably not gonna win, but they are in their natural habitat. Samaria is also being attacked, uh, but I think they're gonna be all right because they have one of the strongest early game units. Pretty sure those war carts are like super OP. Yeah, okay, I'm starting to think that maybe getting a second city isn't that great after all. Uh, both India and America pretty much instantly lost theirs, so that didn't really work out. There you go, all right, I'm, I'm just glad they made it. They get to participate here, just barely even though it's kind of really horrible start. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if you have some sort of coastline, if you can build ships, you're gonna have a much better time here. You can attack kind of anyone, and yeah, I mean, you can just actually move around. Because things are getting crowded. It's getting real crowded up in here. I don't think, I don't think there's any more room left at all. Are the Aztecs about to dodge like the big, oh, no, they didn't. Okay, I thought, <laughs> I thought it was just gonna sit there. Oh, wow, that actually wasn't too bad. I feel like that needs to do way more damage, depending on like if it's one of these early eras, like maybe just wipe out the whole city. Clearly, we're gonna see a lot of crazy stuff here because uh, Rome has a city pretty far from their capital. I don't know how they did this. They're gonna lose it, but either way, that's kind of a big human achievement. There is no Civ out there right now that feels more comfortable in this situation than these guys. I guarantee it. Being surrounded is like their special ability. So this is kind of interesting, at least in this part of the map. We've got four cities that are just constantly changing hands, whether it's through war or through rebellions. And it's been like that for like 50 turns. Oh yeah, but I just noticed that India's dead. I think India just died. America probably, yeah, took them over. I don't know if there's anyone else to die. It's kind of hard to keep up. Yeah, no, there's definitely some people that have died. Maybe quite a few. It's, it's a little complicated, but just just know, I mean, there's, there's been some deaths. Yeah, do not lose this city, Norway, please. I, I mean, you need as many coastal settlements as possible, and if you lose this, I, I don't think your capital's gonna be enough. Again, if you're wondering, I am still using that alternative colors mod, so if some of the civs look a little weird, I kind of have to because of bugs and stuff like that. But I noticed that Japan and Canada look really similar. Is that from the base game, or...? I don't know. Please, Russia, keep doing what you're doing. This is this is great. I want to say they should be maybe a contender to probably win the whole thing, but I don't know. They might lose this stuff. I kid you not, the Maori have more population, at least in their capital city, than most of the inland civs. So even though they had that huge disadvantage, I mean, they've caught up pretty quickly. Things are getting out of control. I don't know how anyone is possibly going to go to war at this point. Yeah, can we get some rats to start a plague or something? That's not fun. That cannot be fun right now. Probably... Not the best situation to be in, but no, I mean, they're just taking it. They seem fine. And just in case you wanted to look at the whole map in general, it's beautiful. 
clearly the most magnificent thing it's a it's a rainbow i feel like i'm pretty disappointed with the aztecs if anyone's gonna start to take some cities it should be them with their jaguar warriors eagle warriors whatever but uh i mean maybe that hurricane did a lot more damage than i expected this is not good this is very very bad eleanor is the last person that needs more cities she's got four okay well she lost one what the hell's going on here she's cheating everyone's on deity difficulty by the way which in hindsight might have been a bad idea that's why there's just so many units. Scythia is doing the best right now, and I haven't even really been paying attention at all to Scythia. I think it's just because they've lied low, and they haven't constantly lost one to two cities every single turn. That's probably a good thing. Things are clearly only getting more and more clear as time goes by. Who am I kidding? Can someone start a genocide? It's kind of funny because there's so much room up here to settle new cities, but that's just not going to happen. You can't, you can't move back here at all three religions have been founded they still have a really long way to go but i mean each one of these civs i think should have a pretty big advantage not everyone got one of these france finally has three cities out here in the north and they're kind of all connected so that's a pretty good sign and indonesia now has the same thing over here so that's even better if they can get a hold of mumbai which i don't think who's going to take this well it's possible there's only a couple people at this point they're able to explore the entire Hemisphere, it's just Norway and the Maori, so not, not really a surprise. This area right here does not seem like a good place to be at all. Like, they haven't had any any luck of getting anything. Pretty sure all these guys are screwed. Like, someone like the Inca gotta be real worried, because if Tamira sends, like, a big enough force down this way, you know they're gonna take the city, and uh, that might be the thing that gets the snowball rolling. Oh, nice! This volcano's blowing, and uh, no one can escape. They're all just... Yeah, they're just gonna have to chill here and take it. Well, the Maori are actually over here invading Samaria, and they might have a good chance. I don't know if there's enough coastline for them to do much of, yeah. I, I, they're gonna need a lot of uh, Arabia's help. Look how many units Russia has. Russia's so lucky that they're cool with Indonesia to an extent. I mean, the open borders agreement, I, they're just, <laughs> they're just buying real estate over here. I don't know when we missed this, but I'm pretty sure the Americans started their war on drugs. I don't, know how it's going but they definitely started it there's definitely a little bit more space around and i'm wondering if it's due to some of the natural disasters because uh, i'm seeing some open tiles and then i see this volcano erupting not as many people around it anymore so that i that's good biggest city so far is actually australia they've been lying low for a while so they don't really have to worry about you know killing half their population due to war i'm still really confused about this whole tornado thing like why is there four Tornado, I mean, it looks like it's three, but there, there's too many ones. Clearly, the English are having a lot of good things happen, as, uh, I don't know how they got some of this stuff. That's just the magic of Eleanor. Okay, maybe things haven't gotten that much better, but, uh, I mean, there's definitely more movement going on, so that's something. The Islamic Roman Empire has just been established. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, and it looks like they're going to keep these cities for a while, as long as they don't lose it to a war. Was not expecting Kangaroo Land to take over Amsterdam. That's kind of a miracle. Figured that was definitely going to be America, but they had to have gotten super lucky. Oh, I'm liking these dams. They're looking pretty nice. You got a little sea going on right here. I got to look out for more of these. And the French are going nuts. Uh, they have five cities now, so they must have taken England and just pushed them back towards the south. That's good. Norway's just holding on barely as uh, they, they're they just they're just with their capital. I thought they'd have a chance here. I really, you know, just because of the coastline. No, that's not happening though. And the world better watch it because Scythia has founded their third city. And uh, I hate, I, I hate when they just, they, why do they put the canal here? Like, like that looks so dumb. <laughs> why is that necessary? I'm sure the Aztecs are thinking, ideally we won't get hit by a second hurricane, right? I mean, what are the chances of that? I mean, but who knows? Anything is possible. Oh, wow. Okay. And the war on drugs has officially been defeated since America has Amsterdam. Although, I think they're going to lose that. A lot more people have died and uh, things are continuing to go back and forth. But there's definitely more space to work with. And uh, Canada has all of a sudden become a major player out here in the north. Just the fact that Coupe is still alive has got to be one of the most amazing things. I mean, he might end up dying. He only... Yeah, yeah he, he doesn't look like he's doing that well, but he's won the game in spirit. I've also been learning that you can't really play Civ 6 tall. And, uh, I mean, that shouldn't be much of a surprise since the cities aren't... 
compacted within the city center anymore. You have to have land. So having everyone, you know, forced into these small places means, like, even though it's DD AI, technology is, is struggling. The Phoenicians also died. Not sure exactly when that happened, but uh, Spain finally got their second city. So it's a miracle. The Roman Empire is still going strong, but they haven't picked up any other settlements. It would have been nice if they got this. Japan somehow got this. Damn. All right. Uh, well, this is starting to look pretty one-sided. It's about time because I mean, nothing has happened for hundreds of turns. Yeah, England is about to take over everything. I mean, there's still about 100 turns left, and I think there's a couple powers like Indonesia and, I mean, well, Scythia, yeah, your, your time's kind of already passed you. Flood walls are being built, so I guess we'll have to see if any global warming affects their reign. I think it's possible there's a lot of tiles that have been messed up. I don't even know exactly how they did this. I mean, they clearly took out the Romans, and I'm assuming it, it had to have been partially loyalty, if, if not entirely. And lots of people are still dying. That's exciting, especially as things continue to get even worse. Oh, oh, this is gonna be good. So here we are in turn 500, and uh, some things have changed. Unbelievably, the English did lose a large portion of their empire. Not entirely, but uh, they definitely didn't win this. I mean, it wasn't exactly a landslide, is what I'm saying. I think I'm most surprised that no one took over the whole map. That is weird. These are the only leaders that still remain, which is kind of incredible, just because we started with all 42, so... Bunch of people died. It looks like Canada could have won this somehow. I've made fun of Canada for so long, but I think they might have gotten a victory here. They were probably going to take Kyoto too, but uh, it is turn 499, so the game ends like next turn. This probably would have set him over though. There were three religions, but it was really only down to two. Uh, Eastern Orthodox and Islam. And then we have like a little bit of Hindu here, I think. That's nice. They have a nice little stronghold over this one city. And then there's just a wide variety of governments, but uh, both the English and Canada are digital democracies. Pretty sure. Indonesia should get third because they were impressive. I mean, it's kind of incredible that they got this far, but it wasn't enough. I, if we went to turn like 750, which I can't, but if we did, there's a chance that they could still maybe get first. I like how Russia was just fine with being super defensive the whole time. Just building forts. No one was going to take them out. They weren't going to take this capital. And at this point, disasters are happening every single year. Uh, they're pretty bad as well. Six population died last year. That's not too bad. Destroying the planet might have been worth it. So let's find out who won. Moment of truth. Uh, it looks like in terms of score, England passed them up and they have a pretty significant advantage but I, this is going to be up for interpretation again i still can't believe no one took over the entire thing no one won a science victory that that is crazy i i don't i don't know how that's possible but again because no one really expanded until the end maybe that's why but domination is where i think we might have to give it to canada this was supposed to be a domination game and they technically control more capitals can we give it to the syrup people again this was deity and I did not expect the map to look like this by the end. This is very odd. There's also been a lot of land lost, clearly. But uh, I think I might have to explore disabling loyalty. Maybe that would change some things up. Pretty sure it would. Thanks for watching. See you next time. A big thanks to Free Cruz, LBC, Destiny, F 9000, Paint Me Like You Do Your Sheila, Elijah Senpai, Crucification, Swiss Argo, Maxi G, King Solomon, Ben Moak, Galley, Tanner of the Nazareth, Mr. Perkelly, Cooter Donkey, Brandon H, Mega Fat Boy, A Sneaky G, Jared Clark, Battle Buddy 1847. Thank you.